Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the last tutorial, we looked at 5 tips for narrative that are commonly asked and while I was writing the list, I actually came up with 5 more. So today we're going to go through 5 more common questions about narrative. Let's get started. So for the first question, so you will see I have these two sisters here and when I walk up to them I wanted to point at the camera at either sister and talk to them. But when I play it the camera goes down to the bottom and looks at their feet really really odd. If I skip it it goes to the other one and you might just have with one NPC in the dialogue at once and it will just glitch out. Now there are a multitude of reasons for this but the one thing they all share in common is narrative can't find your actor for whatever reason. So in my case I have this little trigger here that starts the dialogue. I can put it anywhere it's nothing to do with those. So what I need to do is to tell narrative this is sister one and this is sister two and the typical thing narrative uses is the tags in the actors. So you can see this sister here is working and she has a tag named Yumi and if I go to the dialogue that actually starts all of this, to so the Nakamura sisters, you will see my speakers, I have two of them, Yumi and Ayumi, like so. So I need to make sure that something in the world has those tags. So what I'm going to do is come back to this dialogue trigger here, which is an external trigger, and you can see I've accidentally applied the tag to this trigger. So I'm going to delete this tag off and I'm going to apply it to this sister here. And you will see now if I test it, I can run up and start the dialogue and it points to the correct sister, like so. Some other common issues that you might have with this is if you're not using the tag aspect, the next thing narrative will look for is that you have populated the default NPC avatar. It will try to use this if it can't find it by the tag method. Now you can see on my dialogue tracker, I'm not passing one to it because I'm using the tag method. You will see if I come to say Rusty's dialogue here and I open his blueprint up, where I begin dialogue on him, I pass self into it, which is Rusty himself there. So you need to make sure that narrative has a way to find what you want. The next thing is narrative is highly coded to work with skeletal meshes. But that doesn't mean you can't use it without. It has these functionality to prioritize skeletal meshes if it finds it. So when you come into Unreal and you create a basic blueprint character, it will automatically give you a skeletal mesh like so, where you have the capsule, the mesh, and then that's it. Narrative will use this and instantly go to this mesh, the first mesh it finds, which is typically the body, and use this to point the camera to. So if you come into your dialogue here, and if you come into your class defaults, you will scroll all the way down and you will see under configuration, you have a default head own name called head. And what this is, is if you open your skeletal mesh, on your actor if they for some reason don't have a head own like so or you've called it something different like head o one or my character's head something different to head it will look for the head when it finds the skeletal mesh so if your head's down here it will point down here and unfortunately if unreal can't find the head it will also point down here so if for some reason you have your camera pointing down and you've checked the tag you've checked the default npc and it's still not pointing to them check that they're actually have a bone called head and whilst we're looking at the static mesh another common feature of meta humans and such is to have multiple meshes inside the actor so for example if i duplicate this mesh inside here this one might be called my face and then i'll have another one called hair and since narrative will come down and look at the mesh and then try to find the head it will often fail because your head is actually the face mesh so in order to get around this issue, if you are using something like MetaHumans and you've split the head off from it, is to come into your dialogue here and overwrite the function get speaker head location. You can return the vector of where the camera actually needs to look for the speaker's head. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a bunch of ways that you can double check that your dialogue is successfully pointing in the right place. So if you ever have something where your camera's not pointing to the right place, check that they've got the correct tag, check that you're not passing something into the default NPC avatar like you shouldn't be, and then finally, check that your skeletal mesh aligns with narrative. If you're using something different, come and change your bone name or overwrite the correct function. The next common thing that is asked about narrative is can narrative work with the XYZ plugin? And the plugin can range from anything from a typewriter effect to a UI library to an entire game framework. And the answer of always is always it depends, probably yes. If it's something minor, like you have a teleportation plugin, yes, probably narrative can work really well with it. But then when you have something like a full 
fantasy game framework where it's got dialogue included, maybe you don't like it, you want to use narratives, it's going to work, but it'll take a lot of work to integrate it because that plugin has probably got all the dialogue pushed through the entire code base of it to make it work. Whereas narrative is its own, you're going to have to replace it or somehow override the little bits you need. But for other plugin types, such as having character blueprints or character AI or special abilities or something like that, there are different ways in narrative you interact with other parts of your game. The most common way to interact is to literally just call narrative direct. So if you, for some reason, it, when you hit this dialogue trigger, you want to say, I've completed this quest, and this dialogue trigger could come from plugin, you can just drag off and simply do complete narrative day task or complete narrative task. And then you can just pass in what you want. You could even promote these to variables to make it generic. So you could interface with narrative from the plugin to narrative. But if you don't want to do it that way, then the other option is to create your own custom narrative tasks where you go off to the plugin and talk to that instead. So if I open up one of my existing ones from before, what you can do on the event in task, I'm going to come up and say, go to my player. And I know the player's got a special ability. I can come in here and I can get the ability. So I'm just going to get the cash. And this cash plugin with quotes that I have has an event dispatcher. When my cash is changed, it will run the event. So for me doing this, I can just come down and complete this task. And maybe this task is called get some money. So I can come in and bind to the plugin, so the cash system in my case, and then I can bind an event to it and say complete the task when this is and there are many, many different ways. Another way, because narrative is full of different ways you can bind to it, is you can run an event on it. So if I come to this here event here, I could create a custom event when you select this dialogue that goes to my cache and gives me some money. So it might very well be that when you talk to Ayumi and you accept her quest, for example, she will say, great, have some cash. So then I will create a narrative custom event which go connects to my cache system and increases my cash amount. So that is three different ways you can interact with different plugins. Every single plugin is going to be different and there are going to be different ways to achieve it. But I've not yet seen something narrative can't connect to, more as it's a little bit more difficult if you want to replace. So typically, narrative always manages to work alongside something. The next common question is if narrative can display its dialogue in the style of an anime game where you have one character one side with a static image and then another character another side with another static image and then the text will line up at the bottom there's no 3d cameras and yes you can really change narrative to do anything you want. so if i come into my narrative default ui here you will see where it starts rendering the actual text it has all the details of the line in place so what you can do is you can easily modify the base dialogue line object either in C++ or create a blueprint object and you can drag in say the current scene image like I have here and then all it will be the case of is modifying the UI narrative to have an image so I will drag it inside the dialogue UI and if I just enlarge it and set it to something by 100 by 100 I can then come in here and I can drag my image in and I can simply do set brush from texture and I can plug this into here and onto here and then I can just drag in my current speaker scene image like so and then if I open up say my Nakamura sisters dialogue and if I come into my class default you can see inside the speakers I've already added a current scene image for these NPCs so when they're speaking I can show an image so if I come in and grab whatever this green face is and whenever that actor is speaking you'll see it's visible by default I should have just made it invisible that's fine if I talk to them it shows the green thing because that actor is speaking if the other one shows it shows white because they don't have an image so all you will do in order to make it act like an anime style game is just full screen it down one side like so and then if I set the width to, I set the width halfway, you could add one or two of them and then display each image there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can display anime style or story based games in 2D. And just while we're looking at the anime style, here's one I prepared earlier. I had a client reach out asking if we could recreate the style of GTA Chinatown. And this is the video demo I sent them saying, yes, narrative can absolutely do this. So I have a top down thing. And when I run in, you could see that it's recreated the Chinatown style gameplay where it shows image over it, it has the text below and then after a certain period of time it will change and the images change to face and tell the story. So yes, with some easy tweaks to the narrative it is absolutely possible and really easy to do. 
So another common issue I do see people have is when you use the speaker avatar functionality of narrative. And what that is, is you can see my character is a first person mess. I'm just using the mannequin arms, which are okay, but they don't look fantastic. But yet if I begin dialogue, I suddenly gain a body, which is odd. And that's the narrative speaker functionality. So if you want your actual dialogue speakers to be different, animate different or anything like that, it will allow you temporarily replace your, av your speakers with avatars. And it's really easy to set up because all you do is come into your dialogue and in your class defaults against the speakers or the player speaker info, you have the speaker avatar class and the transform. And all you do, so you'll see if I come down to my player, is you can see I have assigned a BP player avatar, which is just a blueprint with a the skeletal mesh inside of it. That is the epitome of what my player should look like in the game but it's got no other functionality, nothing at all. And all it does is animate and I've put it in there. The keen-eyed of ones of you, and I didn't notice this until somebody pointed it out as well, see if you can tell the issue here. So if I run up and talk to him, it all looks good. It's pointed to me, if I select an option, it goes away back to him, which is fine. You'll notice if I come behind here, and if I just add, say, something really distinctive that stands out, such as, let's add a cylinder. So right behind me, there'll be a floating cylinder. You should see it, right? So if I come up and the cylinder's there and I begin the dialogue, you can see the cylinder's gone. And if I break out using Shift F1 and eject, I'm in the middle of nowhere. If I press F to jump back, you can see my character's nowhere near it. And this is a common confusion with narrative and one I personally didn't know either. Narrative spawns your avatars in world space, nothing to do with the actual dialogue. So if I come and search for my player, so you can see my avatar, his position is 000. That is completely different to the position in front of this character here. And that is actually the avatar transform here. Now, if you've got some static NPCs that don't move and you know the dialogue will always be in the same place, you can just come in, get the position of it, and paste in the rotation and location into the speaker avatar transform, and it'll work permanently. It'll work perfectly fine. However, I have all my NPCs will be able to walk around, be in different positions in the world. They might use the same dialogue. So it's not an ideal fix for me. So instead, what I'm going to do is, because my player is still here in the middle, but they're just invisible, is I'm going to come and overwrite the function that spawns the avatar, and then I'm going to tell it to move. So in my dialogue here, where I want to do it and of course you can do this on your master dialogue as well and I'm going to come into the functions and I'm going to overwrite the link speaker avatar and this is the function that spawns the avatar if you have one if you don't then it's not called at all but what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drag this return node off and leave the parent link in and this is the thing that goes off spawns the avatar stores it in memory does everything it needs but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off the return value and promote it to a local variable and I'm just going to call this spawned avatar and this function is called for each avatar you have and then from the spawned avatar i'm just going to paste it into the return node here like so so i've got free reign of it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and do get player pawn then i'm going to drag off from my info here and i'm just going to hit break and what this will do is give you the speaker id of the current avatar it's trying to spawn so for example player or tyler and from the spawned avatar i'm going to do get actor with tag and i'm going to plug my tag into it so from here, it's going to go off and find whoever speaker we're looking at, so Tyler or player, and try to find them in the world. If it can't find them, then what I'm going to do is do a for each loop over it, and then I'm going to drag from the array element, I'm just going to do get transform, get actor transform. And I'm going to drag my spawned actor in, and I'm going to do set transform, set actor transform, and I'm going to plug it into it. Of course, you can break it apart and not do the scale if you don't want to and stuff like that. And then I'm going to come get my return node and plug it into the completed like so. And just with that, ladies and gentlemen, we can now come back to the game. And you will see when I run up and talk to him, my player should now have a cylinder in the background. And you'll see now, if I run up to him and begin the dialogue, you can see my character has a cylinder in the background. Fantastic! So it is correctly placed my character in the right place in the world now. We can break off and we can see, oh, he's floating a little, but that's just because my pivot points are different. The pivot point of this guy's in the middle, the pivot point of this guy's at the feet. So that will just be off. That's just something I fixed in the blueprint. But you can see he is now spawning with the dialogue. And if I skip through it all and well, end Tyler, it, there you can see I'm back to normal. Everything is correct. That is the common misconception about the speaker avatars. It is also very well possible for you to turn this speaker avatar transform into a speaker avatar offset instead. And then you can just do all of that in the C++ if that's what you're confident 
doing. And the final tip we're going to go through, ladies and gentlemen, is the option to change how the camera acts when you're in and out of dialogue. So you can see if I currently run up to Tyler here, you will see it faces the NPC, and when it's the player's turn, it faces the player. But if you think of a game like Skyrim or Fallout, you never really see the player. It always focuses on the NPC only. And narrative has stuff like this you can change a building, and with some small modifications, you can actually make it do anything you want. So you can see if I come into Tyler's dialogue here and I come up to the class defaults, you'll see that you have the spawn camera dialogue option here. And then it has a bunch of different things you can change, including a dialogue shots setting. And these shots basically change how the camera acts in narrative. So conversation, if you hover over it, will be in the center of both people so you can see them side by side. The next one you've got is over the shoulder, so that's more like Fallout 4s where it's just over the shoulder of the person looking at the other one and then it switches round. The next is the speaker where it just focuses on the speaker and the final one is world transform where you literally stay in the world where you want the camera to be. Now the speaker is the closest one we've got that will act just looking at the NPC but because it's a generic one it will also turn around and face the player. So what we can do is we can come in and change the DS speaker by creating our own version of it that'll just face the NPC and it's really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my blueprints folder here and I'm going to create a new folder called narrative dialogue shots and inside here I'm going to create a new blueprint and I'm just going to select the existing DS speaker because we know it does nearly everything we need it to. And I'm just going to click select. And I'm going to call this DS underscore NPC only. And I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to come and override the get shot transform. And what the point of this is, is you need to return a, a transform, a rotation scale and location of where your camera is going to be. And that narrative will take over spawning it and handling it. And all this function does is handle the transform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the shot transform and I'm going to add a call to the parent function. And I'm going to connect all this in like so. And because our parent class is the DS speaker, technically we could just plug this in like so and it just continue doing everything it normally does but we need to change it to look at the player if we're talking to, to the player and this is really easy to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and do get player avatar and i'm going to drag from the dialogue and i'm going to do get player avatar so and this avatar will either give you the avatar that spawned in or the player itself and i'm going to say equals equals and then I'm going to get the speaking actor, like so. You may have to drag this around to make it look nice. And the dialogue is the current note that's been playing. The speaking actor is the person who is speaking. So if the player is speaking, it will be the player. Otherwise, the NPC, the speaking actor, will be the NPC. And the listening will reverse as well. So we're going to say, if the current person who's speaking is player, then what I want to do is I want to switch on this. Then I'm going to add a branch in here like so. And I'm going to say if it's true because the player is currently speaking, I'm just going to get the normal dialogue. And then for the speaking actor, I'm actually just going to pass in the listening actor. And then for the listening actor, I'm going to flip it around and change it to the speaking actor. So we're basically going to flip the values around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and paste it below. And this is going to be for the NPC but this time we'll flip over the speaking and listening actors to the correct order. And what this little hack will do is it will come in and say, is the player, is it currently the player who's speaking? If it is, flip it over and make the player be the listening one. And the NPC, since they're currently listening, will become the speaking actor, so the camera will point to them. And then it will flip it around and just do it by normal. And now if we compile and save that, and we go back to my dialogue here, if I come in and change this to be NPC only, and of course it's an array, so you can add as many as you like if you want to change it, I can now play, and when we run up to him now, it should only ever face the NPC. So you see, it's facing him, I'll skip it, I've got my dialogue options, it's facing the NPC, I'll skip it again and you can see we never see the player and this is exactly more like Skyrim. You do also have the options to change the offsets here so you can see it's got some tilt and axis we can change all of that and that is a super super quick way to change the camera angle and add your own. And that ladies and gentlemen is five tips that I commonly get asked about narrative and hopefully really easy fixes for you to crack on. If you have any other tips please let me know below. Thank you for watching, please like, comment, subscribe and I will see you next time.